Hebrews 11.6 But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Continuing consideration of the name of God, we look into the name of Jesus, once again asking the question, what's in a name? In our first episode regarding the Trinity, God and three persons, we read from the New Testament about Jesus Christ, who is noted there as the image of the invisible God, and of whom it is stated, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Our inquiry starts with a man facing what he thinks is a moral dilemma which is tearing his heart and mind apart. His name is Joseph. His beloved future wife Mary has turned up pregnant, and her explanation is the strangest story that he has ever heard. My child is not from man, but from God. Now in those days, Hebrew law pretty much said that Joseph was to bring her to the town square to be stoned to death, if she had cheated on him during their engagement. However, as we read the story found in Matthew, the first book of the New Testament, we find that Joseph was a just man who planned to put Mary away quietly. At this point, the Lord sends Joseph what must have been a very clear dream, telling him what the deal is and not to be afraid of the marriage. Matthew 1, 20-21 but while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. What's in a name? Well, there's plenty in Jesus' name. Are you ready for a brain twister? Jesus is our English translation of the New Testament Greek name, Asus, which is of Hebrew origin from the Old Testament, Yehoshua, or as we have translated in English, Joshua. Now, why is that relevant? Well, Jehoshua means Jehovah saved. In short, and very much the same as the Lord statements from the Old Testament, which we examined in the last episode, the self-existent one has saved. The angel said to Joseph, You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. In many ways, Jesus made it very clear that he was indeed God come to save us, and one of his main methods of this communication was to let us know that he is the great I Am, the existing one who exists, who spoke to Moses from the burning bush. John 6, 35, And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes in me shall never thirst. John 8, 12, then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. John 10, 9. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. John 10, 14. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep and am known by my own. John 11, 25-26, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? John 13, 13, you call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 15, 5 through 6, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. John 4, 25 through 26, the woman said to him, 
I know that Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Once again, we are intended to understand the force and depth in these sayings. Jesus did not just come to give you light, a door, resurrection, truth, life, or make a way ensuring you get shepherded through life as if these things were something to be given from one person to another. Rather, Jesus Christ himself is the light, is the door, is the resurrection and the life, is the way, the truth, and the life, is our teacher, our Lord, and that great shepherd of the sheep. He is the branch to whom God attaches those who believe, and he is the promised Messiah, the Savior of the world. Jesus spoke these things to his first followers, and shortly thereafter, he gave his life for us, the sinless one, paying the debt toward God for our sins, and after three days, as foretold, he rose from the dead. Are you skeptical concerning the truth of Jesus' resurrection? Can God really raise the dead? The most powerful proof we have been given is indisputably historic, that his followers went out and in only 300 years turned the majority of the citizens of the pagan Roman Empire from idolatry to salvation through Christ. Now, perhaps we might find one person who believes some crazy story about a resurrected Lord and spent their life telling others about it. Even in our day, there seem to be plenty of people who believe all sorts of things wandering about. But where would you find 11 peaceful men, later joined by one more, who were so convinced of what they had seen and heard, having met the risen Christ, that they spent their lives preaching his message in hostile times, with all but one being put to death for what they taught and believed? Not just the apostles, but from the first, the New Testament lists 500 others who saw Jesus after his resurrection. Then, literally, hundreds of thousands of souls across the Roman Empire experienced the power of God through the seed of their preaching and their actions and believed. In those first 300 years, thousands of the members of Jesus' early church would stand firm in their faith being martyred by the Roman government and the rest were typically familiar with persecution for their beliefs. Indeed, although major segments of the future church would become mere religious shadows of what God in Christ had intended, there have always been areas of the world where true followers of Jesus suffer and even die for their faith. We just don't see it very often in our Western news media. Jesus firmly established his church through the power of his name, cleansed by his own blood, and sealed by his Holy Spirit. Near the end of the Apostle John's life, when John himself, as the last remaining apostle, was in exile for the sake of the gospel or good news, Jesus appeared to him. He commanded John to write, which resulted in creation of the last book of the Bible, known as Revelation. In that book, Jesus puts the crowning touch on his I am statements, affirming his identity once again for his church in no uncertain terms. John records this encounter with Jesus at the beginning of the book. Revelation 1, 17 through 19. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Write the things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which will take place after this. In closing the book of Revelation, Jesus would speak these words. Revelation 22, 12 through 17. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into the city. 
but outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him who hears say, Come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. We hope you have enjoyed this episode on building your faith and that you will view the rest of this series. Comments are always welcome, but let's keep them clean and respectful of one another. Want more in-depth teaching from the Word of God? Check out our published works available in paperback or ebook format from your online bookseller.